Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Agora Call, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. And man, this is important big news that's come out of Candente Copper, trades in Canada, the stock symbol DNT. With us is Joanne Fries. She's a present CEO of the company. For those who are new to the story, because you've seen the headlines and they've been a bit of a head turner, this is what you need to know. Candente owns uh, a large economic copper deposit in Peru called the Canariaco Norte. It's a 100% owned feasibility stage porphyry copper deposit that now has, by my count, 14 billion pounds, billion pounds of copper, 4 million ounces of gold. And by the way, I'm rounding, just approximating, 90 million ounces of silver and some molly to boot in there. And that's in, in all three of the categories, right? It's considered the 10th largest late stage copper resource in the world, sixth highest by grade. In fact, it's been the subject of four pretty big research reports over the last couple of years. Goldman Sachs says it's the lowest quartile of the top copper projects worldwide. Deutsche Bank says it's one of three projects required, required to meet the upcoming copper supply demand gap. Haywood calls it one of 18 assets selected as likely to be considered by majors looking to acquire. And RFC Ambrian says it's a top 10 project for potential to involve third party M&A. And on top of that, Fortescue, Fortescue Metals owns 19.9% of the company. Uh, and the news that we're talking about, Candente Copper announces positive PEA results for Canadiaco Copper Project. Joanne, welcome back. Congratulations. Thanks very much for, for hosting me, George. Hey, before we get into some of the numbers, and those numbers are mind-boggling, but before we get into them, how big is this for shareholders of Candente Copper? And how happy are you guys as the executive team? Well, it couldn't. We couldn't be in a better moment to be developing a project like this. It's just amazing. I mean, copper has, over all the years, of course, I've been in the business a couple. Um, <laughs> copper, you know, has uh, it's it's the metal of life. You need it for all your basic um, things in life. But now it's it's you know your refrigerator, your computer, your telephone, your plumbing, your. Um, but now it's the electric vehicle you know requirement for not yep. just the, the the vehicles the engines but the charging stations and so everybody wants a better life everybody wants you know we we want to clean up the planet and so copper is just not stopping and it's not that easy to find projects like this and and nor get them into production so um that the price of well, copper is what at four sixty seventy eighty today we were just well i looked at the futures mark just before we got on it's at 493 on the on the on the futures and goldman sachs i believe has come out and called 550 for copper uh sometime next 12 months or so so the timing couldn't be any better for candente right joanne no. i mean you're no, growing demand going price exactly some of the cycles we've seen over the years you're not sure how they're, long they're going to last. This one is definitely here to stay for a long time. So what's the plan for the company, Joanne? Because you guys can go a couple of separate ways and you may not have the plan or you may not be able to lay pin it down for me today, but I've got to figure you guys either go this alone and you develop it and turn it into a mine or you go halfway, maybe you find a JV partner or you go all the way outright sale. Uh, to a major, you know, can, are you able to give us some color on which way you guys are leaning? Well, the whole reason we did this PEA was was to get a lower capex that's more reasonable for a smaller company to build. Now you might, and that means first of all, it opens the playing field. The number of companies that could b build something that's a bill in our capex is a billion dollars now. Um, so that opens the playing field to people who could buy us to build it, but also makes makes our ability to build it ourselves um, much better. Now, Peruvian pension funds have um, contributed in, in some really key mining projects. Mina Justa was the most recent one, but they like to be strategic. So the fact that we can do get our CapEx down to a billion means they could be looking at ha funding half of that. Now that would be debt and equity. And not today, because today things in Peru are, you know, uh, pension funds are a little, little restricted on what they're doing just because of what's been going on. But within a year or so, they, they believe the conversations we've had, they'd be opened up. Now, um, we, we just want to show how robust this project is. And so we've gone with a plan that start 40,000 tons per day, then ramp up to 80 um, out of cash flow. 
is very reasonable for a company like us, um, to, you know, building up, or, or as I say, a med med medium-sized producer. Um, having said all that, um, companies like us usually get bought out, and it's just a question of making sure we get the right price for our shareholders. And of course, when we started really pushing on this project um, into 20, you know, I'm just going to talk about 2010, 11, 12, 13, which was the last time that juniors were really getting bought out. Everybody was selling their projects for, you know, minimum 200 million, but let's talk more, more 400, 600, some as high as 800 million. So there's no reason why we can't get to that. Now, we've got work to do. We've de-risked it with this PEA. The report's coming out yep. um, March 14th. And a lot of people are waiting for that report because that gives you know many, many more details that all the analysts and, and um, bigger companies, medium-sized companies that are serious about seeing well, it. Every, every, every stakeholder in the world every who, yeah. who's interested wants to see that. So, you know, the, 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 the highlights we put out um, in the news release February 8th that, that's great. Anybody can read those and understand that we've got a very economic project, but now the details are gonna be in the actual report, 43101 report, and that's March 14th. Now our plan after that is to launch straight into feasibility. And I would correct, we were in feasibility some years ago on a much bigger project. And so we, but, but because we've now just done a PEA, we should not call ourselves feasibility. Ah, uh, right. That, okay. That's old literature. And, and yeah. Thanks for correcting that. Um, but in any case, this new PEA, it is a PEA. I could never, and I would never say it's, it's, it's more than a PEA because it's not, we've got a lot of new components in that, that mine plan infrastructure plan. But having said that it's got a lot of, metallurgical and geotechnical and other studies behind it that your average PEA wouldn't have. So, you know, you have to leave the confidence level as a normal PEA. Having said that, because of all the other work previously done is why we feel we could launch straight into feasibility. Now, a question for you, by the way, my camera's frozen, so don't worry about that. Uh, I can still see you and I can still hear you just fine. Question for you, uh, you use $3.50 copper uh, to calculate net present value and payback and all that. So at 350, you know, net present value, just over a billion dollars, payback in about seven years. Uh, but that net present value increases to north of 1.8 billion uh, when using 450 copper, let alone if you're at, you know, 4, 480, 490, where we are now. Uh, right. Why did you use the lower, the, the lower number? Osenko and ourselves are discussed it uh, thoroughly and believe that you should use long-term conservative prices because you really want to know at what price of copper your project looks good. Then you do your sensitivity charts and show what it'll look like with higher prices. And, and so that's the key thing. And, and that did us really well when we did our studies way back in 2011. Um, back then for a bigger project with CapEx, it was, it worked at 250 copper. Now I'm not going to say that, that that's not current, but my yeah, that's nowhere close. and you said something about Goldman Sachs and they identified us as one of the lowest costs, um, of copper needed to go into production. So that's yeah. why we were so, you know, we were low on the scale of, of incentive price of copper. And that's what you want to be. You want people to look at your project and say, okay, if in case, you know, copper prices didn't stay high, which ones would still get built? And so that really shows the, the strong economics of our project. And you have a sensitivity chart. I don't know if you want to bring it up as a share, screen share for you to take a look at that, but I think it'd be great for everyone to see those numbers. Yeah, sure. You can see that, right? So yep, yeah. Show us what we're looking at. It's kind of walk us through what we're looking at here. Yeah, so we use an 8% discount. That's standard for South America and, and this stage of project. So right here at 350 copper, you can see that our, um, and our CapEx is 1.04, 1, 1 that's not gonna change, okay? And billion. And so our NPV meets our CapEx of just being over a billion dollars using 350 copper and an 8% discount. And by the way, this is after tax. So wow, people's numbers, unbelievable. You have to understand all that or, or know what you're looking at. Then as you go up with the price of copper, and this doesn't talk, you know, we use a steady uh, price of gold and silver because um, you can't put too many variables in here. So at 450 copper, we've now got an, we would have an NPV of 1.8 billion. At current, now five, sorry, at $5, it's going to be 2.2. 2. 
Um, so current 480, 4, 490, you know, go between these two, you're basically, you've got your 2 billion. And that's double your capex. Now, when you can have an NPV that's double your capex at, at current copper prices, that's, that's a fantastic project. And then you look at your IRR. So here at 450 copper, 22%. But twenty-four and a half at five five dollars. Those are fantastic IRRs. IRR sixteen point three. That's still fine. You know, mining projects get built when it's above fifteen percent for your IRR because it's a twenty-eight year mine life. So, um, so those are the key things. And then you've got your annual cash flow and payback. And as you mentioned, so we, we're going to start at forty thousand tons per day, which will be one hundred and twenty. Um, get my numbers here, 120 million pounds of copper a year, then we would ramp up to about 193 by going from 40,000 ton per day throughput to 80,000 throughput, but that'll be through cash flow. Now, if you're if that's happening at a price of 450 copper, that's gonna happen in four and a half years. And that to me is a blow away that you could get a billion dollar project paid back in four and a half years. Exactly, yeah. And by the way, uh, it, it's just worth mentioning a little bit, you're also using 1650 gold and 2150 silver. Um, and you know, that's being conservative as, as well because gold right now is on the verge of 2000. We're somewhere around 1950 today. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure where silver is, but so you know, you've used, what I like about this, Joanne, is you guys have used really conservative numbers. You're not, you're not stretching with numbers to, 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 uh, to, to make your point here. Yeah, exactly. And, and I didn't mention, but before we forget, I do like to mention that. Um, so, I mean, the, the first thing about coming on an, a new CapEx, um, a, a lower CapEx, I should say, starting with a smaller throughput, we also wanted to prove, improve the ESG aspects of the project. So the first thing we looked Very at, getting, getting rid of a roaster that was planned for taking out arsenic. And we managed to get rid of that through geometallurgical modeling, we could understand the arsenic better, we can do in-pit blending, we find it doesn't report to the con as much as was thought initially. And so we're, we're coming up with no roaster and we still get a con grade that you can see here, 26% copper, um, some nice gold, silver, and low arsenic. So you pay penalties in arsenic usually when it's over 1%. We would pay small penalties over the 0.5, but under under half percent, you're probably not paying any penalties. And if you are, they're, they're very minor. So that means we don't need the roaster. So that's our first thing on the ESG. Then what we also did is we managed to get um, a dry stack co-mingling of, and I'm just, um, sorry, this size is a little messy, but um, right. a single dry storage facility with co-placement and co-disposal of waste and then filtered tailings. So it's, it's, it's dry and that's coming away from, you know, previously a lot of mines were built with wet tailings and those are the ones that end up sliding, unfortunately, if there's, you know, a disaster like, uh, you know, a dam leakage or, or some horrible rainfall or, or even an earthquake. So what we've managed to do is get rid of the roaster and now we've got this single dry storage facility of waste and filtered tailings. Um, so we've really improved um, the ESG aspects of, of the whole project. And that's critical, right? Because you could have fantastic economics, but if the ESG isn't there, it's almost a pariah. It's almost an orphan. Nobody, nobody, nobody wants it. Absolutely. And, and I mean, the way no mine can be built anymore um, without very high international stand standards, but there's ways to improve those and we've improved upon those. The other thing we've um, implemented is a big conveyor system. So a lot less trucking of materials and a big conveyor and that works on electricity. So that's, um, that'll be moving both waste and tailings. Hey Jim, we talk a lot about the numbers, but I think what's also really talk, uh, important to talk about just for a little bit is, I don't know, the heart and soul of Candente, which is like you said earlier, a lot of deals were done. A lot of a lot of MA was done 2010 to 2013 ish, 2014 or so. And since then, it's been uh, it's been a rough ride for the resources space. Not for not just for you specifically, but for the junior the junior resource space. It's been a bit of a rough ride. Um, yeah. You know, what does this say that we're now back here again? What does it, what does this say about your team's resolve, your team's expertise that you didn't waver, you knew what you had? And it's easy to say it now, but 
man, it was tough for a lot of companies, 2015, especially. I remember 2015, December was just Death Valley for the junior mining space. You know, uh, what does that say about your team's resolve in, 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 in making it this far? Well, we, you know, we have a number of people on our team that understand the, the industry and, and they just understood the value of, of an asset like Canary Reaco. So we just couldn't possibly give up on it and did anything we could to raise money. You know, some dilution people didn't like, but we're alive and well. And, and the, the junior market still needs to bounce back because, you know, most of us are not valued anywhere near where we should be um, with the assets we have. But as, as to your point, just understanding that the asset very well and knowing what you have and having the, the resolve to hang in and, and do what you have to do, right? Um, you know, we, we several of us worked with no pay for several years, and wow. uh, you know, just do what you have to do. But no. Well, the, look, that's easier said than done right now, John. But I'm glad you 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 said it because I give you credit. You know that people don't realize the amount of strain and pressure and stress that can create sometimes to be operating under those circumstances, and you guys did it. And I mean, we're not you're not over the finish line yet. But it looks like Candente can see the finish line, and it's a, and it looks like it's going to be a great one for shareholders and also for the management team. You know, well deserved. Last words to you as to you know what shareholders should be. I know, I know. You know, March fourteenth, the four three one one comes out, uh, and then what more should we be looking for? What are the what are the catalysts that we should be looking for? Well, then we'll be um, launching into feasibility, I believe. I mean, I have to verify that and we have to talk to more more than one engineering firm to um, get proposals. But in addition to that, we're going to we're going to be marching on two paths. So one is uh, applying for drilling permits at Canyon Rack with Sewer and, and Verde to increase resources there. And that's kind of a separate path because it's different authorities for the drilling permits. And then launching into feasibility on Norte is with a separate, um, again, uh, environmental authority for development in Peru. And just moving these things along as fast as we can, but doing it properly, you know, with the community involvement and um, all the authorities. And um, and and then just um, seeing, seeing how much copper we actually have, because, you know, as you mentioned, the 14 billion pounds of copper, and this is a summary and it's hard to, I'm not supposed to add all the measured and indicated and, and inferred in one cat, you know, at once, but. Um, I did, but I did just because I want, I want to give a, a good overall view. It otherwise, because there's too many numbers, but please do refer to our website and our, our resource. In fact, why don't I just um, do that right now? That'll be better for everybody. Um, yeah. And while you bring that up, Joanne, what is this? What is the community support? How is the. Uh, you know, the sentiment in the community uh, for, for Canary Aqua Norte? Well, they've been watching us for a long time and, um, and, and they want jobs and they want development. Now, there are people scared of mining. So we, hence our, our you know, meetings we have in the community and, and formally we'll have quite a few too to present the whole new mine plan. Um, so we have to assure people that their agricultural uh, existence and, and, and great uh, products you know, are going to improve, their life of agriculture will improve, but um, we're not going to contaminate, we're not going to destroy anything, but but we can offer some added development, um, bringing in things they need like health care and, and better education, more roads. Internet is one thing we're working on with, with government. And um, so improve their, they can have their lives improved and, and not made negative with a mine in their backyard. Um, and that's, that's the key thing. But safe to say that any concerns are just the normal concerns uh, that anybody would have would say, hey, just show us your plan. We just want to make sure we're dotting I's and crossing T's. But but but, but overall sentiment, would you would you rate it as really supportive, half supportive? Where would you rate it? No, I would. I don't have any exact numbers in front of me, but for the most part, people want good development in their area. They want to have better lives. And they know mining can help that. Now there are people still afraid and we have to work with that and, and make sure they understand. And some people will never want to mine in their backyard and that's that's their right. Um, All right. And look, for everyone at home, because I was using some, some uh, overall numbers before, 
you got some pretty specific numbers here. I don't know if you want to run us through those yeah, quickly. Just quickly, so you can see here, we now have nine billion pounds of copper in the measured and indicated, and that becomes proven and probable with full feasibility. And and that's a lowered cutoff because using 350 copper instead of the 250 we used before, but also just what's going on in the world of copper. Uh, but no, it's really that num that based on 350 copper that you have now say this this is economic now. You know, before you'd need a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 cutoff to be economic. Um, you'd start your mind with these higher grades, of course. Um, and then in the inferred category, we've got another 2.6 billion pounds of copper. And, and you can do adding the numbers here, you know, um, gold here and, and silver here. And then I want to jump to, so quickly, this is Norte. That's all the numbers we talk about in the pre-fees come from this. But in Canyon Sur, which is, this is a four kilometer trend, so these are about two kilometers apart. Um, that also has a new resource, which I'll get to in one minute, but I just want to show you our footprint of the project. There's no communities living, no families living anywhere where the copper is. And we're now going to have a footprint that's really kind of in this area. And um, whereas before it could have been a little bit bigger using a valley over here and such. We'll have a crusher down here and then a conveyor system that comes to the southwest and then up to a plant site up here. And because the plant site will be up here between Kanyarako Sur and what is now a target of Cabra Ada Verde, we have no drill holes yet, um, that would, you don't need huge deposits here to make them economic when you've already built a plant based on, on Norte. Um, and then let me get into the actual, so this is what Kanyarako Sur looks like, that's where we've drilled the 15 holes plant site up here and then the resource on sewer that we now have and and I I mentioned we've we've drilled 15 holes or the 15 holes yeah 15 holes um, we've drilled in Kanyarako sewer that this resource is based on that's not all the story we haven't drilled off the deposit yet so and that's why we've been kind of holding back from doing a resource calculation because we weren't sure we already had something significant and we didn't want the world to think that's all that's there. It's not, but I can't say it's going to be doubled or it's going to be tripled or it's going to be another one and a half this. I, I just can't say yet until you, you know, complete, complete your drilling. But the point is already we have 2.2 billion pounds of copper and, and a million ounces of gold and some silver and some molly in Kanyarako Sur. And, and it just gives us something more to look forward to, which is, which, which is great. Exactly. And, and backs you up for the numbers you gave of 14 billion pounds of copper and, Four million ounces gold and and um, fifteen silver or sorry fifteen plus about ninety you know adding them all up anyway yeah well Joanne uh, congratulations on 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 what you guys just announced the numbers are mind boggling anyway uh, you slice them up they're 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 just mind boggling and can't wait to see what comes out March fourteenth and and then can't wait to see what comes uh, for, for the rest of the year, but it sounds like we're almost at the finish line. And I think shareholders today can, can be cautiously optimistic about, uh, about where we'll be in the next 12 months. Right. Agreed. And I'll just mention, we have a lot of work to do to get our market cap up to, you know, where it should be, but we're working on that. And I think um, the PEA is a really good way to get that going, especially once the report is out and people can see how solid the project is and then just launching straight into fees. You know, but even then, I think of the situation of NORAT resources, where, you know, junior mining just sometimes is, isn't getting the value it should. And that's because we we live in a competitive world for small cap risk capital, right? We, in a, first of all, in the small cap, just in the public issuer space, you have technology and cannabis and psychedelics. So you have all that competition going on. And then you also have outside the space you know, risk capital being allocated to cryptocurrencies and NFTs and, and things like that. And that's, those are real competitors, right? To, at the end of the day, not everybody can get full valuation, but, you know, Nora Resource, if I remember correctly, when the bidding process for them started, the company was, the stock was around 25 cents and it ended somewhere in around, I don't know the final number, somewhere in around $1.20, $1.25. So uh, I'm not, by the way, saying that that's what's going to happen with Candente, but what I'm saying is, um, the the market value concern, you know, the market cap concern, sometimes appears to be getting cleaned up when competitors start vying for a product. 
exactly. for, for a project, not for. Project. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree. All right, Joanne, as always, thanks for being with us. Congratulations to you. Thank you, George. Congratulations to the team, uh, you know, and uh, and uh, keep on trucking because you guys have whatever, all the, whatever decisions you, you guys made have been great. And I think everyone appreciates it. Well, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. To everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform to Joanne Fries. She's president and CEO of Condente Copper, trades in Canada and the stock symbol DNT. For those who are new to the story, and I wouldn't be surprised, that's a lot of you because of this latest, you know, this announcement about the PEA and you want to do more due diligence, start the company's profile page on Agoracom. We've got it, you know, great layman's terms because we know sometimes geology is not the easiest thing to understand. We have great layman's term overview of, of the company. And then when you, once you got the foundation, head right over to the Candente website to do your deep dive due diligence. Guys, if you believe in the future of electric vehicles, if you believe in the future that copper is going to play uh, in all of this, if you believe in Goldman Sachs telling us that their, their number on copper is 550 uh, going forward, $5.50 a pound going forward, then it behooves you to take a close look at Condente, do your due diligence, and uh, and then don't tell us 12, don't say 12 months from now, we didn't tell you so. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.